Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me today for another Lessons from an Old Quilt. Just got back from yard sailing. I purchased this quilt. It's incredible. It was $6, but it's in really rough shape. So usually I lay them out on the table, I take measurements, I start to research the fabric, I do all of that. However, this quilt stinks so bad that I'm gonna do things a bit different. Upon inspection, this quilt was put together later. In, in fact, I believe the top is really, really old, which I'll tell you more about later in this video. The backing and the batting, it was probably put on much, much later. My guess is like even the 1970s, 1980s, something like that. The batting is absolutely polyester. The thread that was used to put this on is polyester too, and it stinks so bad the whole thing just reeks i can't even stand to handle it so what i'm going to do is take the backing off i'm going to take the ties out and i'm going to discard all of the batting the backing all of that stuff that i can't use it's in really rough shape trust me i'm also going to wash the top and i'm going to meet you back here when we can talk more about this quote here it is it is clean it smells good i can finally uh handle it and not be totally grossed out. It was so filthy. I had to rinse it many times to get it clean. I do have a short video on my channel showing me washing it. I used Biz baking soda and vinegar, but I heard from one of the viewers that the vinegar and baking soda cancel each other out. I've been using that mixture for a very long time, but I am gonna try just the detergent, which is Biz. I love Biz for this. The amounts of stuff I use to clean it, it really depends on how soiled it is, how much of a risk I'm willing to take. So I'm always reluctant to tell people a recipe of what I use. I personally don't care for RetroClean. I know a lot of people use it, however. I am a little annoyed that the package is so small, and that's what bugs me about it. Biz seems to work really well, and I get this at Walmart but back to the quilt. So this quilt measures 67 by 67 inches, so it's not a huge quilt. It was finished, I think, at a later date in the 1970s or so, like I had said. The fabrics are absolutely from the early 1900s, maybe even some from the late 1800s. It is old, it's, it's old, it's really old. I don't know if the blocks were maybe found at a later date, however, because the blocks are machine pieced together, even though they are hand pieced onto their foundation. So who knows what the history is there. They could have been machine pieced together by the maker. I'm not sure. The fabric is made up of mostly cottons. I use these two books uh, for the majority of my research, but I also have a whole bunch of other things that I use to find out information about old quilts. So let's take a closer look at this beauty and see what we can learn from it. Look how little these pieces are. I mean, just look at them against my hand. These are itty bitty pieces and this is so, so cool. So let's look at the block because it is a little hard to see. You can see it here. Here it is and it measures about six and a half by six and a half. So there are 21 pieces in each one of these blocks. And since there are 121 blocks in this, that means there are 2,541 pieces in this quilt. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness. So this was foundation pieced by hand, and you can see some of the stitches right here. Let me move these out of the way. And we'll look on the back so you can even see it better how it was actually made. I do have a tutorial up on this block, however, where I uh, used it as inspiration, but this one was pieced by hand in my tutorial. It's done by machine, but you could do it by hand if you wanted to. The red center is classic for log cabin blocks. The significance of this is the hearth of the home or the fire in the middle of the home. Before I flip it over to show you the back and the foundation, let's talk about some of these incredible fabrics. So we see a lot of shirtings, there's some wools, there's some heavier fabrics and then there's some lighter fabrics, which might be why the wear is a little bit different. When we look at this quilt, we see a overall red, white, and blue quilt. However, there are other colors here in it, like this orange, there's some purples, there's a purple gingham right here, and there's some pinks and more purples and a red and green. There's this green here too, that's almost like a silk. Now some of these colors of course could have faded, which might be why we're seeing the shades we're seeing, but it's also clear that the maker used what they had of course, and also kept with the overall theme of the red and blue. The condition of this quilt, as you can see, is poor. 
even before I took it apart, I swear it was in really rough shape. We have a complete hole here that goes all the way through and a lot of these, they're just falling apart. The block itself was made from the inside out like a traditional log cabin. So we see the red block in the middle and then each piece or log is added going around, again, hand pieced to the foundation. We also see that it's light on one side and dark on the other. And this classic layout of seeing a stripe down through here is called Fields and Farrow. It's one of my favorite layouts with log cabins, although there's a bazillion. Put a link below in the description if you want to learn more about the different layouts of log cabin quilts. One thing I really love and appreciate are the stripes and you can see how they're going the direction of the block. I love that. And we see that over and over again. So I don't think it was a happy accident. So let's turn it over and we can see how this is made. The blocks were put onto a muslin. You can see that they're hand stitched. If you look real closely, it is hand stitched down with an off-white thread. There are a few blocks that they did not use off-white thread, however, like, uh, let's see, this one. So you can get an idea of where the stitch lines are. I'll try to get the stitches on camera, but it might be hard because it does blend in. The backing has all kinds of different thicknesses of muslin, again, using what they had, I'm sure. And we even see some that were pieced like this one here. And there's one down here too. So whatever scraps they had, they would add on these strips. There are also a lot of stains. This red, I believe is from the backing that was on this although there's some red fabric here that could have bled through. We also see how this green also bled through. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of stains that I could not get out with washing. There's one here, and there's a pretty large one here that I worked on to get out. We see again that green here. It's in rough shape, but boy, is it a cool quilt. Flip it back around. I just, I love it. I love the way it was made. I love that the maker pieced it by stitching it down and then flipping it. I, I love everything about it, except for the condition, of course. I wish that were better. <laughs> Isn't this a wonderful quilt? Oh, so many lessons we can learn from this one. And if you think of something that I didn't say, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. The first thing, of course, are the colors. You know, when you're making a scrap quilt, it's always nice to have some sort of rule. For example, in this one, it would be blues, whites, and reds. Now, I realize that the maker used what they had. I totally get that. But I just find it hard to believe there weren't some sort of colorway plan in this too. Either that or those were the colors that they wore a lot of. I'm just surprised there aren't as many browns in this. Even from the fading, I'm surprised there weren't a lot of browns. There are just things in it that make me believe that it was intentionally a red, white, and blue quilt. However, there are other colors incorporated, which I love. And I think that's so important if we are making our own scrap quilts to put those unexpected colors in to the quilt too. I think it just adds interest and in, I don't know, makes it sparkle as I've said before. Another thing we can learn from this is when you're working with teeny tiny pieces, I mean, these are half inch logs, that's it, half inch, is to use a foundation. It stabilizes the block in those little tiny pieces because it's really easy to get them wonky and off a little bit. So this allows for them to have something behind them that's gonna help them st be straight <laughs> as you're making it. But there's nothing wrong with a wonky log cabin either. If you are striving to be straight, a foundation is the way to go, just like this maker did. And if you really think about it with fabric being scarce like it was that's a lot of fabric to put on there there must have been a really good reason that the maker used a foundation and personally I think it's because of the teeny tiny pieces and the last lesson I believe we can learn from this is to save quilts like this I know some of you probably wouldn't agree with me on taking it apart you have to trust me on this when I say that it was the best thing for this quilt for this to remain alive and usable it the backing and batting had to come out it was filthy and I don't think I could have gotten it clean. And I do believe that red bled onto this quilt and I believe it would have bled more if I had washed it. Also the ties that were in this were cutting into the fabric and causing holes. So for me, the best thing to do for this quilt was to take the backing and batting off. I feel it can have an extended life because of that. When I talked to the woman who sold this to me, she had said her mother had it in her house and had bought it at an auction and it was on display in her house. She also told me that she intended to throw it away and at the last minute decided to sell it at the yard sale. So it wasn't probably going to end well for this quilt had I not bought it. Maybe somebody else would have bought it, but you don't know. You never know. I feel like I saved this quilt by taking it apart because now I can at least have it near me 
trust me, it stunk. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. Make sure to check out the tutorial that I made using a foundation on a mini log cabin that was inspired by this quilt. I think it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to uh, pay homage to this quilt and the maker. I hope you have a great day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.